manual at your convenience and especially at the end here I think where we show you how to build a proper uh, cat uh, category 5e or 6 cable. That's right Carol and now we continue with our review and we can see the map. Now the map tells us where the uh, pairs on the near end connect to the pairs on the far end. In this case we see that pair 1, 2, in other words pin 1, 2 is connected to 1, 2 on the far side. 3, 6 on the near side is connected to 3, 6 on the far side. And it tells us that all the pairing is proper I mean, and there's no split pairs, no shorts, no opens. Now over here it shows us the delay for each of the pairs. It shows us the skew which is the difference and you can see that uh, one pair is of course zero, one pair only has a one nanosecond uh, skew, one has three and one has five. And now we're back to the beginning which shows us that we have a very good uh, CAT5E cable. You know we were talking about how with this tester in today's version that we are um, we're allowing the customer to skip all of this uh, primary data and uh, give them the choice to store it or not or review it and of course we've just reviewed it screen by screen but if the customer chose in the field not to review it instead to go back to their office and print it out what they get out get is a printout like this now I just want to cover up these bottom two graphs because these bottom two graphs have to do with level two testing and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Very good idea. We'll just we'll keep that secret for now. But for level one testing, exactly what we've accomplished on this 50 foot cable so far, this is what your printout looks like. Now this is a bit of a different cable, but you can see that all of the information that we went through is recreated on the graph including all of the timing, the propagation delay, the skew, the wire map appears right here and the cable category as it did appear on the tester in graphical form along with the predicted speed of data through the cable. Now this would have been stored in your tester, you get back to your office again, you import it into Excel and then you print out a spreadsheet and there's one spreadsheet per cable. Now why don't we go on instead of storing this like most people would and move on to the next cable let's continue on with this test right into level two Joe and then that's a good idea Darrell now of course most people would be stopping at certifying the cable itself but there are uh, those customers who want to uh, really see the, the cable working with their equipment Okay. and uh, we can do that so we, we just uh, move the cursor down to certify with port and we select that. It tells us to uh, plug in uh, to the port and it tells us that a gigabit port will certify at 10 meg, 100 meg and a gigabit. Now you know I've been told this is what makes, this is one of the things that makes this unit so friendly. It might seem obvious that if you wanted to uh, connect a port and real world certify to a gig that you need a gig device to do it. But let's say you only had a 100 megabit device. This is just reminding you that if you want a real world certify to a gig, you got to have a gigabit device. Right. And so, uh, you know, but if the customer uh, has a gigabit port and he wants to certify to a gig, he can use his, uh, um, excuse me, his 100 megabit uh, port. Now let's go certify, all right, and now uh, it tells us we have to plug in the device. So we now plug into the port that we're trying to certify with. And you look at the screen here and it's starting to talk to that port and it's getting more and more information. Now here it is complete. It tells us that this port is capable of 10 megabit full duplex, 100 megabit full duplex, and a gigabit full duplex. You know this is the kind of thing that really makes my eyes light up. I see so many people who are testing cables with this tester that look at it as a primarily a cable device and then they get a screen like this that pops up 
and they, they, you can actually go and read the link pulse of your network device and it will tell you exactly what the capability of the device is. It's a strong feature, isn't it? In fact, some people just use this device for that feature. Right, and also cable pullers use it too because a lot of times you know, they'll do in their installation and then a few days later the customer calls up and says, I can't get my network going. It must be your cable. Right, exactly. You know, the cable guy is always the easiest guy to, yeah, first uh, blame. to blame, first to get the blame. So this way, the cable guy, instead of having to go back there and install a second cable to find out the second cable works the same as the first cable did, he can plug into the customer's equipment and say, oh, wait a minute, you're trying to run at a gig, and that switch over there is only a, a 100 megabit switch. There you go. All right, or maybe the, uh, a card in your PC is only a 100 megabit uh, uh, card. And then he doesn't have to go through all that trouble of, uh, of pulling another cable just to prove that the cable works. Mm -hmm. Now it shows us also that the uh, uh, po uh, port out there is a, has an auto MDI, MDI X. In other words, it can be either straight through or crossover. Make its own cable. That's right. And now, here is a really big feature. You can actually see the data levels on each of the four pairs. Yeah, look at that. And this is uh, in its nice readable format. And over here, we have a line across where it shows the minimum data level according to the spec. You know, and you made the point earlier, the poor cable guy getting blamed for a bad cable. Here you come along and you can actually see real live data coming out of the customer's own switch. See the signal levels of each pair. Clearly displayed, plenty of signal there, more than twice what you need. That's right, and, and it's a nice simple format. So now this is something that he can talk to the customer with. So let's say, for example, if these signal levels were just barely above minimum or maybe even a little bit below minimum, he could tell the customer, well, it's not a cable problem. It's, uh, uh, you know, your, your device uh, has a small signal level. Right. Uh, maybe you should get another one or maybe you need a repeater. And then you can start talking about choices of, of what to do. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, we can now this is a screen that I like a lot because this takes the summary of the cable test and the uh, data test and it combines them together in one screen and we can see is that this cable and that hub are, can run f uh, uh, well above uh, a gigabit mm -hmm. and there's good margin for error so this is a sound good installation this cable and a uh, hub, hub together or, or switch are a good combination and we're going to have good results, good reliable results. You betcha. And now we can now save the results. Now you get you really your second chance to save, right? We bypassed the first chance to save after level one because we didn't want to stop testing. Now we get our second chance to save at the end of level two. Right. Now we can save up to 250 readings and we can print them out later or sometimes let's say if there's a marginal situation you may want to talk to your supervisor who may be on the other side of the building doing a, a different part of the installation. You might say, hey, well, look at the data here. You know, the, this is pretty good. This is marginal. What should we do about this? Right, because you can look at it after you've stored it. <coughs> yes. All right. Now let's save the reading. Now we look over here. It tells us, uh, you know, uh, to press select to save. So we just press select. And that was reading number nine. Number nine. So we have nine tests that are stored in memory. And now let's just go ahead and shut off the tester. We aren't going to lose our readings because they're stored in flash memory. In fact, you could even disconnect the battery from this thing and the readings are going to be there. That's right. And uh, we can now print out the readings or we can go back to, to the original menu and review the readings. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, the readings we took upstairs, we can take a look at those and talk to the customer and say, well, you know, reading number one and two were pretty good. Three is kind of marginal. Maybe mm -hmm. we ought to do a little more work there. Sure. Uh, maybe that's, uh, you know, you'd like us to install a new cable for that one. Five and six are okay. Ten through twenty uh, need new cable. You know, that kind of thing. So test nine was a level one and a level two test. That's right. So now we're going to pretend that this printout is that 
particular test, and then we went back to the office, imported it into Excel, and printed it out. Now we can uncover the level two part of our printout. And as you can see, we're showing you a graphical display of the signal levels that you saw when you were running the test. Data signal levels, notice how we clearly label it port here, clearly label it uh, cable up here to differentiate between the cable test and the port test. And then this is the final speed prediction, taking into account the capability of the port and the cable. Well, we've, uh, we've covered a lot of ground in this video clip, haven't we? Yes, we have, and I, I hope we uh, showed you the, the capability and how user-friendly this is and how the graphics are, uh, really help you uh, bridge the gap between the installer and the customer because, as you can see, everything is simple and straightforward. The graphics really help you to be able to talk to your customer so that he understands the situation. You're not trying to snow them with a bunch of DB this and DB that. Very well said. Thank you, Joe.